Hey there, if you're someone who likes to watch anime or read manga, chances are you've already heard of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Since its debut in 1986, the series has accumulated a large number of fans all around the world, as well as becoming one of the best-selling weekly Shonen Jump series. Written by Hirohiko Araki, Jojo is a mix of fantasy, action, and adventure. Taking heavy inspiration from Western pop culture, it is renowned for its unconventional art, references to famous poses, as well as its flashy color palette. With the ninth part title Jojo Land's beginning in February 2023, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about the critically acclaimed seventh part, Steel Ball Run. Generally considered as one of the best manga ever written, it is a must read if you are an anime or a manga fan. While it is in fact the seventh part of the story, it is actually a reboot of the franchise, with its original story ending with part six, titled Stone Ocean. What this means is that you could very well start reading Steel Ball Run without being aware of anything that happened beforehand, since the story story and characters are completely unrelated to previous parts. Let's get into what makes Steel Ball Run so great and why I think you should read it. Published in 2004, it was not originally intended to be part of the JoJo franchise, instead being published weekly under the title Steel Ball Run. It was then moved to the monthly seinen magazine Ultra Jump in 2005, where it officially took the title of the seventh part in JoJo. With more time on his hands, Araki was able to greatly improve his art and storytelling, as the deadlines were now longer. The result is a unique story widely regarded as the best in the franchise, as well as producing some of the most stunning visuals ever seen in the genre. Without going into too much detail, the story is centered around a horse race across the United States set in 1890. Our two protagonists, Johnny Joestar, or Jojo for short, and Guy Rosepli both decide to take part in the race according to their own motivations, but they will soon discover that the race has a hidden agenda behind it. Having a lot more time to write each chapter, as I've mentioned before, this enabled the Rocky to greatly improve his art over the seven years the story was written, as well as improve his narrative. Since it is a reboot, he had a completely blank canvas to build the story that he wanted, free of the limitations imposed by the story of the previous parts. What this means is that in Steel Ball Run, you can find all of the silliness, unimaginable plot twists, as well as the unique action sequences which made Jojo great, but with more time to think about how each event could turn out, you get stories and characters that have more effort put into them. In my opinion, one of the main issues with Jojo was the pacing. Since the story was focused mostly on the main character, being accompanied by a cast of supporting allies, you were only able to see bits and pieces of each of them since most of the spotlight was dedicated to the protagonist. With the story being set around a race where people compete against each other, most of the side characters in Steel Ball Run are given a lot of time on their own, where you are able to reflect not only on the actions of the main characters, but how this affects the side characters. The story flows from one arc to another very smoothly, with reoccurring characters being way more prominent in this part when compared to the previous ones. In previous parts, most of the allies would simply follow the main character and help them in their quest, with action happening along the way. This time around though, since there is a pre-established goal for the story, the race, secondary characters are given their own motives and stories, creating great continuity in the story when Johnny and Garo are not the main focus. Next, I would like to talk about the art. Jojo is a very visual manga. While the action and story are great, what makes Jojo stand out from a lot of other manga in my opinion is how it uses its visuals to convey information. Unlike some other manga, Jojo does not necessarily have its character directly fight each other, but instead uses its concept of stands which is the power in the series, to have characters fight with them. This creates a very unique dynamic as well as stunning visuals. By having a month instead of a week to write each chapter, the author is able to draw more complicated objects, places, and concepts, as well as greatly improve the quality of the backgrounds and fights. In Steel Ball Run, every fighter problem encountered by the character is a puzzle on its own that they must solve using the tools at their disposal. With more time on his hands, Araki is able to fully express his ideas and create some of the most interesting encounters in the entire franchise. That being said, I hope this video will convince you to check out the manga, which has a colored version available on the web. It is also available in paper copies, though in black and white. If you enjoyed it, I strongly recommend checking out the other entries as they are also great. As always, this is just my opinion. Did you enjoy Steel Ball Run? Which part is your favorite? Let me know in the comment, and if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting the channel by subscribing and leaving a like. See you next time!